Did you know that more than 80% of the ocean remains unexplored? That leaves plenty of room for lots of oceanic mysteries to uncover, from unsolved cases to discoveries. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we are going to look at three underwater occurrences and discoveries to see just how mysterious the deep blue can really be. Azores Underwater Pyramid Discovery The first one we are going to look at is the Azores Underwater Pyramid Discovery. Pyramids have been built nearly everywhere in the world, with an eerie similarity and mystery already existing for those above ground, those below ground are even more thought-provoking. The discovery was made right off the islands of São Miguel and Terceira in the Azores. Diocleciano Silva, the man said to have discovered this, was on a fishing trip and using the ship's bathymetric equipment. He saw what appeared to be a perfectly geometric structure, making him question what exactly he was floating above. He noticed that the structure was a perfect pyramid. It's amazing because it forms a perfect pyramid. Moreover, orientation, deployment of the pyramid, the vertices are oriented north and south, just north and south, such as Giza pyramids in Egypt, Silva told the Portuguese news website Terra. The pyramid is very obviously not a natural formation. The pyramid's age is supposedly 12,000 to 20,000 years old, dating all the way back to the last ice age, but little research has been put into the pyramid itself. Interestingly, the Portuguese navy has dismissed the pyramid as a seamount based on old sonar readings in the area. No investigative team has actually gone to the site to check what this occurrence is truly all about. One of the admirals of the navy, Admiral Fernando Pérez, commander of the maritime zone of Azores, says there is not enough information about the pyramid to say what it really might be. He says that at the time, the probes would be a danger to navigation and find nothing. Pérez also says that the Navy is not ruling out the fact that this entire structure could have been caused by a volcanic eruption, making it a regular underwater land structure. However, no such research has been conducted and further probes have been shut down. There are no civilizations local or even remotely nearby the area that were traditionally pyramid-building societies. Archaeologists that did have the opportunity to excavate the area found an epigraph from Roman times, Carthaginian sanctuaries, cave art and megalithic structures. Due to governmental decisions and the Navy's overall skirting of the issue, it's probably a good idea for researchers to accept their answer of this simply being a volcanic underwater structure. The Sunken City of Cuba a little over a decade ago, a team of explorers were working on an exploration and survey mission off the western coast of Cuba when all of a sudden, their sonar navigation equipment started picking up something absolutely bizarre. The technology was picking up a series of distinct stone structures lying 650 meters below the surface. The structures at first seemed remarkably similar to the desolate ocean floor, but upon further investigation, the structures were symmetrically organized stones similar to what you would find in an urban development. Of course, following this discovery, a media flurry soon began with headlines about the lost city of Atlantis being discovered in Cuba. With news coverage, these researchers also attracted the interest of the government, the National Geographic and the National Museum who promised to investigate the sonar images. Over a decade later, there is little research and no investigation to show for this unusual discovery. Pauline Zelitsky, a marine engineer, and her husband own the company based out of Canada called Advanced Digital Communications. They were working on a survey mission in conjunction with the Cuban government off the coast of Cuba. Advanced Digital Communications were one of four firms working in a venture with Fidel Castro's government to explore Cuban waters. Their primary interest was finding treasure-laden shipwrecks from the Spanish colonial era. The team was using heavily advanced equipment to scan the area when they noticed these bizarre structures. Some of these structures were formed with smooth blocks and geometric shapes. Other blocks looked like they were being built into pyramid shapes, others were completely circular. Months later, they returned to the site with another geologist. 
Manuel Iturralde Venent, the head investigator from Cuba's Natural History Museum. Knowing what they would find in this area, they returned with the appropriate technology to examine and record the structures. The large blocks seemed to resemble granite and measured about 8 feet by 10 feet. The investigator from the museum said that if he had to explain this geologically, he would have a hard time coming up with an answer. The main piece of this that is so confusing is that it would have taken around 50,000 years for such structures to have sunk into the depth at which they were found. The catch is that 50,000 years ago there was not the archaeological capacity in any of the cultures we were aware of at the time to build such complex things. Despite such a media flurry, this story was soon buried and the site left unresearched. The quick dismissal of the story has led some to question whether or not there has been suppression of information regarding the finding. Whether the leads just went cold or this is something that we were not supposed to find, we might not ever know. Seahenge in Norfolk, England You probably have heard about Stonehenge, but have you heard of Seahenge? Seahenge was discovered in 1998 on a quiet and forgotten North Norfolk home beach. It is a 4,000-year-old Bronze Age timber circle that caused a huge amount of controversy both locally and nationally when English Heritage agreed to fund the Norfolk Archaeological Unit to remove the timbers from the beach rather than leave them. Seahenge was dubbed by the media because of its close resemblance to Stonehenge in Wiltshire. It is a rather large tree stump buried upside down with its roots up. Surrounding the tree stump were 55 timber posts which had been cut from smaller oaks in the area. 4,000 years ago, this beach was a salt marsh and not a sandy beach. Some say that the upturned tree stump was set that way so that bodies could be laid on top and birds could pick away at the flesh and bones. Over time, the sea has encroached on what used to be the salt marsh covering the beds which were naturally preserving the timbers. The exact purpose of this circle has never quite been determined. The controversy over the structure was maybe more notable than the discovery itself. Many locals were completely frustrated when it was decided to lift the timber circle from the beach because they felt they had not been part of the important historical find and didn't want it to end up being displayed somewhere popular like London. Some of the objectors, however, were not aware of the damage that the sea could cause to the timbers, which was actually one of the main reasons for removing it. People in favour and the Norfolk Wildlife Trust wanted to move the circle because it lay on the edge of the Dunes Nature Reserve and they knew that the crowds of people visiting the site would cause great trouble to the wildlife and the surrounding land. The timbers did end up being excavated. It was a very time-consuming process because experts and researchers had to work within the restrictions of the tide levels. This allowed them two to four hours per day. Not to mention many protesters had taken too frequently to disturbing the excavator's work. Now that the work is complete, you can go to the Lynn Museum in Norfolk where they have the original upturned tree stump, some of the original timbers, and have crafted a life-sized timber semicircle sea henge replica to give you an idea of the original size of the discovery. You will not, however, find any remnants of this magnificent finding on the beach today. But what do you make of these three interesting ocean discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.